This is going to be a tutorial on how to install and run the RetroArch on iPhone. So today, May 15th, 2024, RetroArch has officially been approved on the App Store for iPhone. So anyways, once you actually get the app, the next very important thing you have to do is go to your RetroArch folder in your Files app and then go into there and you have to click on that as well. And you have to keep opening it until you get to your Downloads folder. This is where you have to put all your games. You're pretty much ready to go. So once you open the app, you're going to be greeted with this main menu. And first thing you want to do is load a core. And this is where you select what system you actually want to play. So let's say you want to play a Game Boy Advance game. Then you have to scroll down and find it here. You're going to see there's multiple options for the same system. You can just click on which one you prefer to play with. Do your own research on which one will give like the best performance and whatnot. I'm just going to click on this one for now. Then I want to go to load content and then I'm going to click downloads and that's where I put my games and then I'll just load that up. And then you can select another core again. And then for saving, you just want to click on that menu button and this is where you save and you can save and load. I believe the in-game saving works too, but I prefer to just use the save states anyways because it's easier to see or it's easier to load up where you were and whatnot. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to make a very short tutorial just to get straight to the point. Again, if you do your research, you can find all the different ways to tweak settings and whatnot for other systems, but that's pretty much it. One tip I want to give, sometimes when you transfer games to your device, and of course only transfer games that you already own on a physical copy of the game, sometimes they will transfer in a .7z. If you just click on it and rename it to a .zip file, then it'll transfer. So you click done and you use your zip. And then it'll make it a zip file and that makes it much easier to extract the actual files that you need and then you should be all set to go. One important feature I have to add, or one important other tip as well, is if you want to play DS games, if you start right away it's not going to have touch controls and you have to enable it yourself. So you want to go to settings, core options, input, and then there's going to be pointer type and you want to change that to touch screen and that should work. Let me go back to my game. And you want to, I guess, minimize it depending on the game. And there it is. Now it's working. Excellent. Now devices like iPad Pro or anything that runs at 120 hertz, the games might display way too quickly. So you have to go to settings, which you can reach with the gear icon, frame throttle. Then you have to click on sync to exact content frame rate. And you just want to turn that on. So that way, if your games are running what seems to be too fast, if you put that on, it'll go back to the normal. This will be default on in a future update, but as of right now, it's still off. RetroArch is also available on Apple TV now. People are also reporting that the app is displaying in the wrong language, so I'm just going to put the written instructions on the screen now to show you how to fix that. Another really important tip, if you don't like the actual UI, you can change it to a one that looks like PlayStation. So you just want to go to settings, drivers, menu, and then I believe it's the XMB one. And then you have to restart the app by closing it and reopening it. And you get this PlayStation-like UI and it's a lot easier to navigate, especially if you're using a controller, which obviously this app also supports pretty much any controller you can think of. 